So this study tip is all about preparing by studying pictures. People learn in different ways. Some people are auditory learners, some are visual learners, but whatever your learning style, by branching out and using other techniques as well, you're going to be your best prepared and get your best learning experience. So spend a lot of time with the learning style that you feel works best for you, but definitely make some forays into other learning techniques that you might be surprised produce some pretty good results. So today's study tip is to Try using pictures. So one easy way to use pictures is to go ahead and log in to the Mastering Biology site and go over to the study area. Again, this is the instructor version, which might look a little bit different than yours. But when you click study area, there are lots of resources available to you for each chapter. You'll notice study area has a list of uh, resources on the left side. But if we go up to the top scroll bar here, and click, we can get directly to the materials for each chapter. So let's say, for example, that we were studying the cell. We could click on Tour of the Cell and Go and see a list of resources available for that chapter. And what I really want to draw your attention to is not the tests or key concepts, but if you look down to the bottom of the options here, notice this art for students. So there's some review activities there, some videos that you could watch, but when you click on art for students, it will download for you an entire file full of the artwork from that chapter. So I'm going to go ahead and close my web browser here and look to see if I have that download. And here we are. I have art for students. When I open that file from my download folder, what I notice is that I have labeled images or unlabeled. The labeled ones are going to look just like they look in your textbook. But if you click on unlabeled, you could go through some of these pictures. Let's see if we can look at the previews of these. Look through some of these pictures. You'll notice you have all the artwork from the chapter, but without the labels. And so tour of the cell, maybe what I'd like to do is study parts of the cell. So I'm going to click on this one, eukaryotic cell. And sure enough, there I have a eukaryotic cell. And I've opened that up in Preview, which is, I think that's an Apple product, but you could open this in Acrobat Reader. And I can see that this is eukaryotic cell U, which means unlabeled. And I can use this as a study tool for myself. So I can either just look at the picture and identify what all the pieces are, or I might open my editing tools for my program and even go in and start to label some of these. So for example, is there something I can identify? How about the nucleus? There's the nucleus. Of course, the nucleus is the site where DNA is stored, separate from the rest of the cell. Of course, that's special for eukaryotic cells. Oh, I can tell this is a plant cell because we have a hard cell wall made of cellulose. So let me move that onto here. And as I continue to look, I see that, of course, plant cells have a large water vacuole, which is different from the structure of animal cells, which don't have a large water vacuole. And then what else is different in plant cells? How about that green structure? I could go ahead and label that one as well. Of course, the green structures there are the chloroplasts, which are the site of photosynthesis, right? And then here I can see a mitochondrion, which is where ATP is produced. I can see the Golgi body. I see the endoplasmic reticulum. So I can go through and quiz myself, do I recognize all these structures? And do I know the functions? Once I finish my work, then maybe I open up my textbook, compare my answers, and see how much I know. Of course, isn't it possible that you might recognize things but it still might be hard to know exactly what you really know out of the top of your head. And so another thing that I would really recommend is drawing your own pictures. And so for example, maybe we would be in the next chapter. Well, not the, I think that's close to the next chapter. How about the chapter on cell division? And so for cell division, I might just start with a blank piece of paper. And then with my blank piece of paper, I would try to sketch for myself the phases in mitosis, the cycle of cell division. So I would start by sketching a cell that is not yet dividing.
So before cell division begins, the cell looks like this. So in interphase, the DNA is all unraveled, it's being used, it looks grainy, and we call it the chromatin. So interphase precedes or goes in between the phases of division. And so this is pre-mitosis. So what comes next after interphase, if the cell's ready to divide, in the first phase, the DNA starts to become visible as chromosomes inside the nucleus. So I'm gonna be sure to include that in my picture of prophase. So that's prophase in mitosis. In prophase, the chromosomes become condensed. They become visible to the eye through the microscope if they're stained, like the ones that we'll be looking at in the lab class. And the nuclear envelope actually begins to sort of dissolve, to come apart. What's the next phase? In prometaphase, the nuclear membrane is almost gone. The chromosomes are beginning to move around inside the cell. And during this active phase, it's somewhere between prophase and the subsequent phase, which we call metaphase. So prometaphase is in between those two. So by metaphase, each and every chromosome by itself has lined up on the midline. And it's when each and every chromosome is on the midline that we've reached metaphase. And of course, there are microtubules that are involved in pushing and pulling each chromosome into place, and they're guided by the centrioles. So my simple picture has each of those pieces represented. And then next, we have another very active phase. In anaphase, each and every chromatid has been separated from its identical partner. So they've been separated to the two sides of the cell as those microtubules that are guided by the centrioles that are pulling them apart to the opposite ends. And then we have one final phase to finish it up. In telophase two, new nuclear membranes form. So a single cell is going to divide into two. The nuclear material has been equally partitioned into the two new cells, so they each have all the material from the prior cell. New nuclear envelopes form, and in cytokinesis, there's new plasma membrane formed to actually physically divide the cell into two independent cells. And so just off the top of my head, on paper, I drew the complete cycle of mitosis, and now I could check my work against the book. So working with unlabeled images is a great way to start. See what you recognize, see what you don't, and then go from there and start drawing your own ideas onto paper and see how much you really actually learned. So that's it for today's study tip. I'll see you later.